Hello engineers, welcome back to Engineering Design Simplified. In this video, I am going to discuss about helical compression spring surge, its effects, design considerations and recommendations. When a compression spring is excited dynamically, it vibrates both laterally and longitudinally. If the spring is allowed to go into resonance that is excited dynamically near its natural frequency, the waves of longitudinal vibrations travel from one end of the spring to the another and back until they are damped out. This is called spring surge. These waves of longitudinal vibrations cause the coils to deflect more violently and impact one another. The large forces from both excessive coil deflections and impacts will generate large stresses in the spring and fails the spring early. To avoid this condition, the spring should not be cycled at frequency close to its natural frequency. The natural frequency or critical frequency of the spring depends on its boundary conditions. For, for a helical compression spring positioned between two flat parallel surfaces where one of the surfaces is driven by a sine saddle forcing function, the fundamental critical frequency is written as FCR equal to 1 by 2 square root of K by M, where K is the stiffness of the spring and M is the mass of the spring. M is written as M equal to density into volume that equal to rho A L. A is the cross sectional area, L is the length of the spring and rho is density of the spring material. So, M can be written as M equal to rho into pi d square by 4 for circular cross section uh, into pi d n a. d is the coil diameter and small d is the wire diameter. So, this can be further written as M equal to Rho pi, d, rho pi square d square d n a by 4. n a is number of active coils. The formula for that is n a equal to d power 4 g by 8 d cube k where g is the modulus of rigidity of spring material. So, let us substitute this n a into the mass equation m equal to rho pi square d power 6 g by 32 d square k. Let us substitute this m into critical frequency equation. We get FCR equal to 1 by 2 square root of k by m that can be written as 1 by 2 square root of k by rho pi square d power 6 g by 32 d square k. After simplification, we get critical frequency of the spring FCR equal to d k by pi d cube square root of 8 by rho g. Now we have critical frequency of helical compression spring which is held between two flat parallel plates and one of them is excited sinusoidally. So, FCR equal to d k by pi d cube square root of 8 by rho g. So, the greater FCR the better. So, in order to in increase FCR, we can either increase coil diameter or increase stiffness of the spring or reduce wire diameter. So, recommended natural frequency of the spring should be 15 to 20 times the applied cyclic loading frequency. For example, uh, if FCR is calculated as 400 heads, then loading frequency can be written as 400 divided by either 15 or 20. 20 is what I prefer. So, 400 by 20 equal to 20 heads. So, this is the limiting uh, loading frequency of this particular spring. So, the loading frequency should be either this or less than 20. Please let me know in the comments if you have any other recommendations. That's all for today's video. If you like this content, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.